Influences on the Strategist, Part 2. Groupthink tendencies, finally observed during Elton Mayer's Hawthorne studies. Groupthink also played a part in many negative US troop behaviors in the Vietnam War of the late 60s, early 70s. Groupthink is when a group of individuals, often working in very close proximity to one another, often under stressful circumstances, begin to adopt a group persona. When this occurs, the group begins to share the same characteristics relating to attitudes to authority, attitudes to perceived outsiders, and attitudes to their very purpose. These groupthink tendencies can cause the group to become disconnected from organizational norms. It can, in extreme situations, manifest itself in levels of insubordination that lead to problems in controlling and managing the group. While there is a tendency for groupthink to occur in well-adjusted and successful teams, it should be monitored and it should be, without doubt, considered a risk in terms of strategic drift, alignment, and change projects. Bayesian theory. Bayes' theory relates to probability theory, but it does have relevance to strategic thinking, and therefore strategic practitioners should know what it means. Bayes' theory states simply that when calculating probabilities, one can consider other information in order to achieve a more accurate result. Therefore, for example, if we are considering the likelihood of the probability of achieving success in a research and development project relating to a new product, we could consider related factors when establishing probability. These related factors could be percentages relating to success with other research and development products. Research and development managers' project success rates and other research and development project success rates. While this concept might not appear to be relevant for most strategic planners, it does become important when designing KPIs and alarms. It also links with cause and effect thinking. The holdup problem. The holdup problem relates and is linked to principal agent issues, asset specificity, and opportunism, amongst other factors. It is important to not only view the holdup problem as a binary issue that can be won or lost, but rather as an influence that can allow parties to be either taken advantage of or exploited. And sometimes this occurs in a very nuanced fashion. There are various methods and actions that can be taken to mitigate the threat of the holdup problem. These include weakening the power of suppliers if they are responsible for the holdup problem. This can be done by maintaining a wide supply network. Vertical integration via merger, joint venture, partnership agreement, acquisition, or by internal expansion. Tapered integration, where the firm can be involved in a little vertical integration, either backwards or forwards. In this case, product will be produced but there will still be a requirement to source from other suppliers too. Excess product can be sold on the open market. It does at first seem to be an inefficient solution to the holdup problem, but it can, when viewed as a type of risk mitigator, seem quite sensible. Or the organization can incorporate off-the-shelf components into the product. Fundamental transformation in transaction cost economics. This is related to the holdup problem, opportunism, and competition. Even asset specificity needs to be considered. To really get to grips with this topic, we need to look into Nobel Prize winner Oliver Williamson's work on the subject. However, consider a situation where the buyer has multiple choices of parties initially. After a choice is made and an agent is chosen, then the alternatives disappear from the equation. This leaves the buyer in a far weaker position, as all the problems with the holdup problem come into play. This phenomenon is very visible in cases where expenditure on equipment is required to fulfill a contract. Once the equipment is built, this problem can come to light. The phenomenon is no doubt related to lock-in, 
Transaction cost economics involves viewing the organization in terms of transactions. As such, it is all-encompassing. An organization that has low transaction costs will always outperform an organization with higher transaction costs. Fundamental transformation is the change in the relationship or transaction that occurs once, during, and after the transaction. In the above example, the buyer might be moving into a monopolistic relationship post-transaction. This issue highlights how complex strategic planning can become. It is ultimately up to the strategist as to where he or she will draw the line. However, strategic planners should attempt to be bold. Transaction cost theory crops up again when we discuss the eclectic paradigm, Dunning 1980, when considering internalization. The free rider concept. The free rider concept considers the issue of individuals or entities taking advantage of situations where the other party have covered the costs, yet they can free ride and effectively realize the same benefits as the contributors without actually contributing at all. This issue is an abstract one, but it's worth considering, as it can relate to the Machiavellian view, relating to the power of the status quo. Examples of this phenomenon include copying competitors' successful products or services when they have already developed a market. Thus, second-in competitors have a link with the free rider concept. In mergers and acquisitions, there is often a case where one party is free riding at the other's expense. The same is sometimes true in partnership situations. It can also occur in teams, projects, and overlapping job scope situations. Black Swan Events Black Swan Events were outlined in the book of the same title by Nazim Talib. Talib 2007, and they concern the example of the consideration that it takes just one black swan to be seen in order to destroy the theory that all swans are white. The emphasis being on the issue that no matter how many thousands of white swans that you have seen, the sighting of one black swan will destroy the synopsis that all swans are white. Black swan events are also concerned with unforeseeable risky outliers that when considered with chaos theory and the butterfly effect will inadvertently lead to huge and unpredictable ramifications. The relevance these events have for strategic planners involves risk management and contingency planning. It should also be remembered that when there is a risk, there is an opportunity. Thus, preparing to take advantage of opportunities when black swan events occur should be considered deeply and quickly.